in preparation of getting everything wrong at the end of season two of Only Murders in the Building, I've decided to give you my top guesses on who's most likely to die by season's end. It should go without saying, but I'm not including our podcasters, Oliver, Charles, and Mabel, as they're the stars of the show, and that's not how murder mysteries usually work. I've also disqualified Uma, as I think she's too closely tied to Bunny. Lester would be interesting to find more out about him. He's likely tied to the history of the Arconia, and he's probably worked there longer than most of the residents have been there, but I think there are more interesting characters. Will and Thea both would be bold moves, but I think would take away from what would be a very interesting arc of the two characters should they find that they are brothers next season. Theo also is on a bit of a redemption arc himself this season, and I would hate to see it end with him no longer being with us. He's become a fan favorite, so I could see him doing that, but I hope that they keep him on. And with that, here are my top five guesses of who's most likely to die at the end of season two. Number five, Howard Morris. This would be unexpected. We don't know much about him at all. Like, how does he even afford to live in the Arconia? It would be great to get some insight to who he is and where he came from and and what he does for a living. Does he even work? I think that it's more likely that he's going to stay a serious regular. But if he did die, that would be very interesting and very cool to see the life of Howard Morris. Number four. The Arconiacs. Like Howard Morris, finding more about any of their lives, especially Sam or Paulette, but I don't think they are tied enough to the building itself. One of them could be going to jail at the end. If none of them are guilty, it would be nice to keep them around. Uh, This season, they widened the scope and grew the world, including the outside of the building, and showing the lives of some of the Arconiacs would be a way to expand the universe even more. Like, poor Sam died. Let's see who he really was. Number three, Nina Lynn. Nina Lynn's death could create another power vacuum. If she was indeed killed, we would need to find a new board president, and that is a position that is widely sought after, it seems. I don't think it would be a repeat of this current season, but it really would depend on the killer's motivation. I like Nina as a character, even though we didn't get too much of her. We started out hating her, we ended up liking her, but if we could learn more about her and her life, and why she did the things that she did, I think it would be very endearing, and the power vacuum of losing the board president at such a tumultuous time in the building would be very interesting to see more from. Number two, Cinda Canning. Opening up the world to Cinda and her podcast empire, it would be easy to assume that she was killed by the podcasters because of the slander to their names. Poppy is a favorite and would be a great person to return to, especially as a prime suspect in her boss's murder. I think that it would be cool if Cinda was in the building talking to the podcasters or someone getting an interview and then boop, she's gone and done for and we don't know who did it. I don't know how that would be framed, but more of Cinda, more of Poppy. That's what I want in Only Murders in the Building. And down to my number one suspect of who's most likely to be killed. It's the one and only Mrs. Gambolini. No, I'm just kidding. Teddy Demas, of course. He doesn't seem to be on a redemption, but he openly threatened Oliver. If Teddy was to be killed, it would make the dynamic between Oliver and his son Will a lot different and even the dynamic between them and Theo. If Theo's father had died, and either one of them were implicated in his death, Theo would have a new half-brother, and he'd have no way of knowing if maybe he had something to do with his father's death for tearing his family apart. There are a lot of possibilities that goes with that, and of course, Oliver is such a great character, and having him personally framed in Season 3 as Mabel was framed in Season 2 would be great turn of events 
We've also had a season one that kind of focused on Mabel too, dealing with Charles's family. It's time to let Oliver shine. Who knows? Teddy may have flipped and it was going to implicate others and their legal dealings. And I think if Teddy dies, I will feel like we could get some good backstory on some of the plays that he worked on with Oliver. I love the flashbacks with young Oliver. If we get a reason to bring him back in here, I'm all for it. Any chance I get for more musicals, you know I'm here for it. Maybe we can see the return of Roberta and more of that dynamic. Find out what actually happened in their relationship. We know that he spent all of Will's college fund money, but was there other things? Obviously, his wife wasn't into him or there were issues before that. I believe it was likely him paying too much attention to his work and not with the family. But I want to see all of that fleshed out. I want to see more than stolen glances from her and Teddy. I would hate to take Nathan Lane off of the show, but it would be a great storyline that I would love to see. And who knows, maybe we can even like a grave robbing man. Well, those are my guesses of who is most likely to die. I don't want anyone to go, but someone has to. Who do you think it will be? Let me know down in the comments. Teddy does seem obvious to me, and Bunny was out of left field. It could be someone we aren't expecting. If that happens, who do you think it would be? Let's discuss. Thanks for watching. My name is Dallas, and I'll see you on the rooftop.